what's up guys? This is Jen and today we're going to talk about alternate picking. I get a lot of questions about this and I think it should be addressed. So the main thing with alternate picking is you need to put the focus on your strumming hand. I know that seems um, a little bit like, well yeah, common sense, but what happens is that we're so used to focusing on our chords and our chord hand or a fretting hand that we naturally just go over and we continue to look even when nothing is happening, you know? I'm like, what's going on? Well, nothing. And then this hand is just going willy-nilly all over the place doing whatever it wants to do because we're not checking in with that hand. So when you're practicing alternate picking, all of the focus should be on your strumming hand to start. So the first thing I want you to do, nothing here, just this. I know it seems uh, very simple, but that's what we want. We just want that feeling of down, up. If you need to slow it down, then do that. Go through all of the strings just like that. So then again, you start adding this hand, that's when uh, problems are gonna come up because your mind is immediately gonna wanna go to what's happening on the fretboard instead of what are you picking. The next part, which I know you all love, is we're gonna <laughs> add the metronome to that. So if you need to, start with just every click. And what I've noticed really helps is to say one, and, two, and, or down, up, down, up. It lets your mind and body connect to what's going on. Then gradually increase your tempo. For the sake of time, I'll just double it. So one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, one, something like that. Then double it from there, which would be 16 notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a change strings. It's important that you change strings because I can't do this and talk at the same time. <laughs> It's important that you change strings because obviously the thinner ones are going to give you a little bit less resistance. So you want, to, see I still can't, I'm still trying to talk <laughs> and play at the same time and I clearly can't. <laughs> so you're going to get a little bit less resistance from those strings so you want to practice how that feels. Now when you feel good about that and you've moved up your tempos, then I want you to add in your fretting hand. So do something just like this quasi-chromatic. Something like this. If that feels too fast for you, do four on each. So one, E, and a. That way your fretting hand has a place to land before you have to move. So that's really important that your focus is staying on your strumming hand. So I want you to always check back of, am I looking over here or am I focused over here or am I kind of bouncing back and forth? It's totally okay if you do something like, now plant and back, plant and check in. That's totally fine, but we don't want our attention or our body to get locked into one spot, locked here or locked here, so that if we move our eyes around or our head or our neck, that then that throws us off. So then the next part would be maybe doing a pentatonic scale when you feel comfortable. Same thing, let's do a A minor pentatonic. You can do the four, if you need to, to really reinforce the down up. So 
just like that. If you're ready to move on to the next level after you've used the metronome, try just two. So we've got 50 here. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... But you do not have to go this fast if you're not ready. I'm just trying to give you examples of what to shoot for, but you've got to pick the time that is right for you. Then I would move on to a full scale. So maybe like a G major scale. And then ideally do down up the entire way. So down, up, down, up, down, up. to that G with a down. Pay attention to when you're changing strings that you're keeping the pattern going. So for instance, this down, up, we're changing, we're going to a down, which makes sense. Down, up, down. But here, if we're gonna stay with that pattern, we need an upstroke. So don't be afraid to isolate certain transitions. I'm on the fifth string, fifth fret with a down, then fourth string, second fret with an up. So if you're noticing you keep making mistakes at certain parts, isolate them, you know? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But the main thing that I'm gonna say about alternate picking that I've seen from myself and from my students is if you lose focus, if you try to do too much in your fretting hand, your strumming hand is gonna go off the rails. So we don't want that. So the important thing is that you simplify whatever you're doing as far down as you possibly can so that you're able to focus. Again, just to recap, really really slow either say one and two and or even the down up down up down up and then simple simple scales or examples that can utilize that but that that where you are not focusing so much on your fretting hand a couple things um, that work for students is that sometimes you can put on like a um, uh, like a meditation timer that you can have go off every seven to 15 seconds that just give you that ding. And that is your cue to be like, oh, wait, I have totally, I'm starting to look at my fretting hand again. Oh, back here to get you out of the habit of that. Or what you can do is actually videotape yourself and then videotape, videotape. <laughs> I think I'm showing my age. You can take your iPhone, not a video camera, which is what I used when I was a teenager. That's not what's happening <laughs> now in the, in the technology world. You can take your iPhone or your iPad or your computer and you can record yourself <laughs> videotape, Lord almighty. I'm good, I'm good, I'm back. Derailed, but I'm back. You can record yourself playing and actually look back after recording for a minute and see what your head is doing and if it's going over here and where you're losing focus. Because that's the main thing that I notice with students is that they just lose focus and they're back here only out of habit. So the only way to break a habit is to create a new one. So I want you to feel confident in going back and forth, looking at your sheet music, listening to the metronome, but feeling good about no matter where you're at, that you are in control. And I think that's the last main thing is make sure you're maintaining control. Make sure you're maintaining control. 
I clearly don't have control over my mouth today, but that's okay. <laughs> I think you guys expect that from me now. But maintain control, maintain that sense of um, you are telling your hands what to do and they're not just they're not just doing whatever they want, whenever they want. That's the important thing. You'll develop it, you'll feel so much more confident about your playing, even if you're playing slower than you want to, doesn't matter. I'd rather you play slow and in control than fast and who knows what happens. So that's what I would do with uh, alternate picking. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want some other examples around that. But I think that's a good start. So let me know what you think. Uh, this is a Patreon supported video. Uh, so patrons are paying me to make these videos. They're supporting and it's really fantastic uh, because I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for them. So thank you to all my patrons. If you're interested in finding out how to support, please go to www.patreon.com slash gentranny and you can see the ways that you can keep these videos going. But uh, if anything, just have, have fun playing. Keep challenging yourself. Don't worry about it. Just the guitar is great. And there's a lot of sadness going on in the world right now. And if you can use this as a place to heal or rest from that sadness, that's all I really want. It's just, this is a good space. So make it be a really good safe space for you to play. Don't beat yourself up too much. The guitar is awesome. It's a good, it's a good way to spend your time. So hope everything is well and I'll talk to you guys soon.